Number 14. An ordinary workshop grindstone has a radius of 7.5 centimeters and rotates at 6,500 revolutions per minute. Calculate the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration at its edge in meters per second squared and convert it to multiples of G. All right. So um, first thing I'm going to do is let me start with the formula for centripetal acceleration. Now there's two over here on the right hand side, right? But I realize that they're giving me a radius and they're also giving me some angular velocity. So therefore I'm going to choose this equation to start with, okay? So I'm just going to write that down and I realize that if I do know the tangential velocity, I can simply square that and then divide it by the radius. But you know what? I don't know this right now. Right? I, it wasn't given to me at, at all in the problem. So my next step will be to now think of a relationship between tangential velocity and possibly some other variables that were given, either the radius or the angular velocity. And I realize that if I look over here in equation number three, right, it tells me that the tangential velocity is equal to the radius times angular velocity. So that sounds like it would be very helpful because what I can do is I can take this value now and plug it on in for the velocity, all right? And when we do that, let's see what happens. We get the centripetal acceleration being equal to r omega squared, right? All over r. And I know these values, right? The only thing is though, you have to be very careful. You have to have the distance values in terms of meters and you have to have the angular velocity values in terms of radians per second, okay? So this just requires us to do quick conversions here, nothing crazy, right? Converting this centimeter value into meter, simply move this decimal two places to the left, okay? Add a little zero there, and that's your new value. So 0 0.0750 meters, so that sounds good to me. That will be the radius. And now I just have to convert, do a little more work down here, but nothing crazy. So 6,500 revolutions per minute. I need radians per second, therefore I have to cancel the revolutions, right? And I put radians on the top because I know that there are two pi radians in every one revolution, so the revolutions cancel. Now I need seconds on the bottom, so therefore I have to cancel minutes, but minutes is found in the denominator. So to cancel them, I have to put them in the numerator. I'm thinking, can I put seconds here? And the only way I can is if I know a relationship between these two, which I do, right? 60 seconds and a minute. So the minutes cancel, thus leaving you with radians per second. And now just simply throw it on into the calculator. So 6,500 times two pi divided by 60. So we got 600 and 681 radians per second. Okay, good. So this is perfect now because now in with this value, what I can do is I can now plug this in for my omega, right, right in here. And then what I can do is plug this in now for the radius, right in both spots. And guess what? We're ready to go, okay? So the centripetal acceleration is equal to 0 0.0750 times 681, that whole thing squared, divided by the radius, 0 0.0750. You might say, well, wait, can I cancel some terms here? Couldn't I cancel the radius down here with one of the radii, one, uh, one radius at the top? Yeah, you could have, but I just decided to plug it all in instead. All right, but we're going to get the same answer. So 0 0.075 times 681, square that whole result, and then divide that by 0 0.075. So we get a value of, looks like 3.48, uh, 3.48, times 10 raised to the fourth, okay? And this is in meters per second squared. Great, so now that takes care of that part of the problem. That's letter A, but that's only part of letter A, right? Because they wanted it also, as I look back, they wanted it also in terms of G, but that's easy. Just remember that G is equal to A over 9.80. Just always put the positive value of A in. So G will be equal to 3.48 times 10 to the fourth, all over 9.80. So the G value here simply is 3.48 times 10 to the fourth divided by 9.8. So it comes out to 3,550, considering significant figures. Um, and that is the value of G.
Great. Easy peasy. Now let's move on to letter B. All right. So letter B says, what is the linear speed of a point on its edge? Remember, linear speed on the edge, meaning if we look at the picture, meaning the point right here, it's linear speed if it's rotating counterclockwise as the arrow here shows, right? The linear speed would be pointing directly out here. Um, that's known as tangential velocity. That's known, that has the uh, variable of V. So really what I need to do is calculate V. So I can do that because I do know, so let's, let's first look at the formula, right? Here's the formula right here on the right-hand side. Tangential velocity is equal to the radius, so there's letter B, radius times the angular velocity. I know these two, right? The radius I found to be before 0 0.0750 of the circle, right? You get looking at this picture, you're thinking about what's the radius of that path, and then what's the angular velocity around that path? Well, it was this, but we already converted into radians per second, so remember, you have to use radians per second here in your calculations, all right? And that will get us the tangential velocity, 0 0.075 times 681, and 51.1. So 51.1, and that is in meters per second, okay? And that will be the final answer. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. And it would be awesome if you were able to hit that subscribe button. That would help us out tremendously. And I would thank you very much if you're able to do that. And um, I look forward to helping you with the next question. All right, take care.